But today it was a little bit different. It was Kale and the Omen. So talk to me about the Omen pick, how much you enjoy it, and also uh, is this some kind of a spoiler, you know, a little bit into the next season? Uh, yeah, for sure. Omen's pretty fun. It's kind of like Jet but controller because it's very, uh, you can make a lot of plays and uh, the character's really good. And maybe, well, we'll see. We're still experimenting for sure. Ten's made a lot of waves recently when he showed off his omen at the Africa TV Valorant League, especially after that quote. While he made a name for himself with his jet play, and more recently he's been on KO, we have very rarely seen the star player take up the controller role. In his entire career, he's only played omen in official matches 10 times, all of which were within the last two months. And he played lights out on the role. Sure, he may have made a few ambitious plays and got his fair share of criticism, even from our own Twitter, but you can't deny that he was effective on the role, all while bringing his star fragging power. I mean, he dropped 32 frags against DRX on split. So with Omen being such a new addition to Tenz's agent pool, we wanted to take a look at a few of the plays and see why Tenz on Omen makes sense. The round that immediately jumps to mind when thinking about Omen as a playmaker, akin to Jet, is round 28 versus DRX on split. This round saw Tenz get a massive 4K that clinched our position in the playoffs all off of a play we call the Dog Deposit. But not too much backup just yet, only Maka with that paranoia. And Tenz, he's already gone through. Looking to maybe go even deeper. The Cyber Cage not coming back up yet, he hasn't made noise. They're not quite aware that he's entirely in, and the Paranoia catches RB off guard. Maka just trying to hide away, but can't find the second. Thankfully, his teammates are there from heaven and mid. Clearing up the remaining forces, still two members, Tenz. And this timing over on B Garage, it's hard to read. Zest a little bit ahead of his teammates, though. This is all set up for Buzz. He's able to catch one kill, and he can't find it on the tens. One B1 near health for tens as well. Oh, the from the shadows for the mind games. He goes a little bit far, but stacks. He has no idea. He has to check every corner. He has to wait for the peek out. And now he knows, and no, it's going to be tens. The idea is to wall off B, dog in to clear the site and then deposit tens into the back site with a TP. As you'd expect, it starts off with smokes to isolate the B site. You have Zelsus using his wall to cut off the site, while tens smokes the entrance to mail in mid. John is holding the A push, Zek in the mid push, and everyone else clears garage. Once garage control is established, Zek in groups up with the pack, and John picks up the mid flank. Saucy dogs to clear the back site, and tens TPs in, almost like he's a jet dashing for the entry except he doesn't trigger any of the trips or the cypher cage sound. He outplays RB with a nice paranoia getting the frag, and this triggers the execute. Everyone floods into the site. There's a bunch of trades. After the initial skirmish, it's Tens and Zelsus left versus Zest, Buzz, and Stax. Again, Tens uses his TP to take space, this time on the high ground, looking to catch any pushes out of heaven. He almost gets Zest on the rope through a smoke, but has to fall back once his position is known. While Zelsus is planning, Tenz repositions to Hell and catches a nice timing on Zest, who's trying to capitalize on the temporary three on one. After planning the spike, Zelsus tries to back into Garage, but Buzz is on the flank. Thankfully, Tenz was there to land a nice trade and make it a 1v1. Here, Tyson makes a pretty ballsy play. He alts back to mid, ensuring that he's out of sound range of stacks. It's a super risky play since he's so far away from the bomb, but thankfully, it works out. Stax, unsure of where Tenz went, has to play safe and look for the fight. If he sticks the defuse, he's praying that Tenz made a huge misplay, so he has to tap and look for the peak. With so many different angles to watch and no clear timing on the peaks, Tenz easily clutches out the round and the series. In this round, we saw Tenz create space and get an entry, thanks to his TP and paranoia. He then uses another TP to take an aggressive angle and uses his smokes to reposition once the aggressive angle is discovered. Finally, we saw him use his ult to outplay stacks in the 1v1 to clutch up the round. It's insane how quickly Tenz was able to make these decisive plays and how often they turn out to be the right decision. Another round where Tenz makes a phenomenally decisive play was round five of the same game. It really just comes down to that lurk pressure, the setup pressure on defense as well. Who clears what? Just a second earlier, now with this eco from Sentinels, they want to go for the classic push out of mid, hiding in the smoke. But the Trailblazers is going to spot all of them, and Stax says, I want none of that. They know that the rotation happened from mid to A, so Stax gets that kill. Sight is opened up for free. 
All they have to worry about is Ramen. You can see on the mini map, Buzz has his eyes trained on that. RB still pulling up the rear as well. And DRX still just so cautious as they go for this clamp. They don't left. want to overaggress, give up a free Five rifle plenty. upgrade. Oh, oh no. RB on the backside, not expecting tens to come through, and he could upgrade. They're trying to cut it off, and he's too good with it. Oh, well, that's two. Looking for another, trying to use the paranoia just to buy some space. Now he knows where Stax is. Tens, he's picked up the rifle. He's looking to just hold Stax in position. However, his teammates don't have rifles in hand just yet. So he has the only firepower, but second with a long range stinger burst. And Tens with a nice kill as well. Second with the showstopper. Split second decision making from the Rays of Sentinels. Bringing things back in the lead, three to two. We're on an eco, so we have Saucy Flash B Garage for info, while the other four players stack mid, hiding in a smoke. They get spotted out by Stax's dog, so everybody runs away. With the info from Saucy's bird that there was nobody at B, everybody cheats over to A. RB makes contact with John, but is quickly smoked off by Tens. Using the space, Tens TPs into elbow, hoping to get a frag or two if DRX actually commits. Turns out that DRX has taken a lot of space towards B Garage and B Heaven, so they call everybody back for a B hit. Saucy gets picked off, so Zekin, John, and Zelsus rotate to B through mid. Tens pushes out A main and TPs past RB's tripwire, giving him a nice flank. He's able to catch RB rotating back to B, giving us a gun and a foothold in the round. DRX plants the bomb, and now aware that Tens is on the flank with a rifle, Stax and Buzz re-aggress towards attacker spawn. Tens catches Buzz, but Stax gets Zelsus in return. Knowing it's a two-on-two -on, -two on site, John and Zekin make a play. Zekin gets the trade, while Tens finally gets Stax in mid. From here, Zekin pops his rocket and clinches the round. While everyone played fantastic, and this round was a team effort, you can see how Ten's aggressive flank, thanks to his TPs, was the key to unlocking the round. While these were just two rounds, you can find plenty more examples of Ten's making smart, aggressive plays on Omen from any series in the Africa TV Valorant League. Sure, there may be a few moments where he TPs into a silly spot and gets caught, but that's bound to happen if you're making aggressive plays on Omen. What's important is to see why he chose to TP there. See what potential openings he's making. You'll have to think of Omen as a jet, and then you'll start to see why tens on Omen makes sense. They have a suspicion, but they have to let go of the defuse, oh. and it's doing the job of buying time. Sentinels, they don't mind if they drop some weapons as they're able to continue to spray down. Enzo, all alone, no time. He has to at least find the kills, and he's not going to. Sentinels lead 10-4, and I mean, haters be damned. It's off the back of a very aggressive shadow set forward from 10s. Sentinels fans, gotta be feeling good about that.